Hello and welcome to Our Time. I must tell you, I've pursued our special guest in this episode for probably almost a full year. Frances Bedford, welcome to Our Time, finally. Thank you so much, Malcolm, and thank you for keeping after me. It's been a great thrill to know that you still well, care. I still care. <laughs> We talked when you were still in politics. That's right. Well, I was in politics for 25 years. We've had a few conversations over those, that yes. time. Now, how did you start and why did you start? Well, if we go right back to the very beginning, my father was involved with the Labor Party in New South Wales and unbeknownst to me, I thought I was just spending time with my dad, but I was running beside the car putting things in letterboxes oh, okay. or handwriting the, the meeting notices for the ALP. No email then? No, absolutely no. not. So uh, I've always through him, and we've always spoken about public affairs around the table. And, uh, you know, it's just been a natural progression, really. I, we came to South Australia just before Don Dunstan took over. And, I mean, life... I remember meeting Don and Molly at Tea Tree Plaza, and they were actually munchkins. And I thought they were <laughs> tall people. <laughs> and they were sort of little but very powerful people. And Don, of course, changed everybody. He changed life. everything. He really did mm. change everything. Yep. In fact, I was talking to someone uh, just this morning about the effect he had on South Australia when some idiot predicted there'd be a flood. That's right, on the, on the balcony at the Glenelg Hotel. He stood holding yeah. back the flood. Mm. Well, <laughs> in, in an interesting story, I was learning to be a cashier for the Co-op Building Society in Gawler Place when he was out stopping the run on the Hindmarsh Building Society. So he was yes. well known for, for doing marvellous things like that. And, and his people... first wife opened my first art exhibition at the yep. Old Kings as we're talking Incredible. about the family. I actually applied for the job that I I didn't get as his assistant and the, the rest of well, you know, that could have been different too. The rest is history, but you spent all those years representing the Labor Party and then you well, didn't. representing the people the who people. I thought were best served by the philosophies and principles oh, of the right. Labor Party. But of course that's changed and I think I'm still where I always was, but the world's kind of moved a few degrees to the right. Yeah, it's about being popular now more, isn't it? Uh, I think it's it's important that people have the examples that we had of hearing people like Don, great men debating things at, at the state council, whereas now decisions are made uh, up the top and, and we accept them, whereas before the ideas used to come from the people and they were made policy that way. Come up from the way. bottom. That's interesting to say. And it's in those changed terms. the way things operate most most definitely. What do you think uh, during your time in politics? What to you was the most important thing that happened? Was it Julia Gillard? Oh, of course, that was really important. Uh, I think more than that, for you mean for women in politics, more than that, mm. I think there are things like we've done to encourage the Aboriginal people. Having the flag on Parliament House was a big day for me. Um, saving things like the Modbury Hospital. I don't kind of think of it in the idea of what's happened politically that's been good. Obviously, getting more women in Parliament's been terrific, but I ran what? for an unwinnable seat and wasn't expected you, to yes, win, exactly. and that sort of really gummed the works up for a few people for a few years. Is it the men who are in politics already stopping the women or discouraging women, or is it just that <clears throat> there's not women interested enough to go into politics? No, that, well, I mean, that's why the dilemma that the uh, Liberal Party face where they're saying merit will push you up, well, that's just not true. And um, it's not lots of people who make those decisions. It's only a handful of people who make those decisions. And the decisions are made decades out, like mm. elections away. And mm. so if something goes wrong at one election, that pushes the two or three further out, and that's when things go awry. But it's so important that we have people in Parliament who actually think for themselves. And, and are brave enough to, to stand say up. To say so, that's or right. Or cross the floor. Well, crossing the floor is a pretty exciting sort of um, uh, phrase, but it doesn't happen very often in that way because most of the decisions are already made yes. somewhere else. But wouldn't you love it if they had a nice big picture hat on and they really crossed the floor? Well, the real day for that was when Trevor Crothers crossed the floor to Seletsa. He stood on his feet and spoke for more than an hour. Fascinating. And big man shifting from... Everyone was just sort of waiting for him to move, but of course I had visions of, you know, uh, Rob Lucas dragging him across to the other <laughs> side, but it was a pretty exciting day. That day was a crossing the floor. So you went into politics, do you feel sort of by osmosis because your father was, it was just um, 
Uh, no, well, there was a break there, and then I, I started uh, being the um, chair of the local kindy, so I attacked the local federal member for funding every time I got near him. And uh, he, he uh, sort of said to, to the girls at the office, I'll you know, get her into help sort of thing, so I reorganised the filing system. And uh, he gave me a job on that. And then he and lost his election. Right. And then we had the state bank election, and then I thought, oh, well, we have to keep flying the flag. So I just put my name forward because I was a local mum behind a mask, uh, and uh, I won. You're the referring to election. the people we had on last week. I know, I and know. And you are obviously, you're right, though. Um, that's what that show, I think, is about. It's really Correct. about, you know, women trying to find their place. I think everyone's multifaceted, really. Of course. You know, you've got to have a particular front for whatever you're doing. Uh, well, that's true. But um, let's just talk about what's happened in the recent election. Mm -hmm. They didn't vote you back in. Well, I mean, it was a really uh, exciting election for a whole number of reasons. But my seat had changed dramatically so that I only mm. really had a fifth of my seat left. Yes. So Now, but, why do they do that? Well, for Is a number it, of reasons. As, as houses are built and electorates grow, yes. the pressure might come from the south, but it moves all the seats north as well. And so my... Oh, I see. And so it's based on what, a number of people? That's right. You have to right. have a certain close number in each seat. You can't have 40,000 in one seat and 22 in another. It's just not right. Right. So my seat moved in a matter of two elections to be practically nothing like my seat. And instead of being able to work it, COVID meant we couldn't get out. So that was one facet of it. The other part that was difficult was it became a, an election polarised around the ambulance ramping. Yes. And to have ambulance it people the on problem. the polling booths, yep. dressed in a poll, uh, an ambulance outfit saying, vote Labor like your life depends on it. It's a bit hard to find some airtime in there. That's true. It's a bit hard for them to fix it straight away either, mm. which is Well, they're not going proven. to be able to fix it because no. it's a problem further down. Yeah. Yeah. Was that frustrating that, that the implication was that, for example, that particular that pl uh, platform that they were standing on, is that frustrating when you can see this isn't going to happen straight away? It's just the we're way... We're fooling the people. It's just the way it rolls. I mean, if, if I can't get the message out through all the noise, it's... People just aren't listening it's true. yet. Yeah. But I spent a lot of time in that last period in politics trying to fix the price of petrol for 24 hours rather than 30 minutes. Now, I think that's a really important concept, but do you think anyone could grasp that? And, and it's not really going to hurt anyone. The petrol's in the ground. It can't really have two or three prices in a 24-hour period. No, right. and that, which works, is ridiculous. It works everywhere else in Australia. But consumer laws, of course, Don would be spinning in his grave because consumer laws now are mm. not as strong as they were with him. When you go back to sort of the Roman Senate, for example, yeah. do you think they still have the same problems back then? Very much so. And the Ides of March is a very important date in my life because it's usually around the time of state elections. So we always <laughs> say beware the Ides yeah, of the March. Ides of March. Yeah. So uh, it must be, uh, we were just talking before I was saying, you know, for somebody like me, for example, that's been on telly all my life, there's one day I won't be on telly anymore. Mm. And... No, no, that can't happen. Oh, well, it will happen. Well, I was a bit you know, slow there, wasn't I? But, but you know what I mean. It's <laughs> yes. uh, and then people sort of think you're still there, as they think you're yep, still in politics. They do. But in fact, they don't think about your state of mind when you're not doing the thing that you love to do anymore. Mm. Now, you must have loved being in politics for so long because of what you could achieve. No, well, there are certain things you can achieve or strive to achieve but never get to achieve. But, it, you know, politics and parliament are made up of three jobs and the job you love best is being with people, hearing what their thoughts are and then taking those ideas. For instance, one of the things we thought was really important was universal emergency ambulance cover. Mm -hmm. Other states have that, South Australia doesn't. The line is, well, everyone's going to be in emergency. Well, that's, that's just not true because when the ambulance crew get there, if you're not sick... Yeah, they can do certain things for you. Yeah, but they don't take you if you're not in an emergency. No. So that will work, but that's another concept that seems to be very hard to explain to people. Where, do, where is the pressure coming from? Is it coming from the people that are like the publicists that, that feed the information to the politician to get that three-second sound bite, is, do you think? It's hard to know. There's a lot of noise in people's lives now and in a mm. lot of ways that's why we started... From the, every direction. Exactly. But that's why we started the Muriel Matter Society, which I know you're dying to ask me about yes, later. Yes, I will be. <laughs> but 
It's, Second segment. It's too hard. <laughs> Don't preempt things. It's Don't too pre- hard <laughs> to uh, to make sure that all these messages are getting the same airtime because people, a lot of people, just want to be able to put food on their table, Quite. or get their children off to the excursion, or yep. keep their mum and dad alive in a nursing home. So it's it's and that's becoming more and more of an issue. That's true, but I mean, I think the one thing that's universal is that everybody thinks someone is looking after their best interests. But in actual fact, I don't think that's true anymore. Was it ever true, do you think? I think it was. Do you I think th- that was before, though, the media started to talk so so much about so little? Well, I mean, the role of a Member of Parliament has changed. We used to be legislators, whereas now we're pseudo-social workers. And we've just, made just that role Just explain ourselves. what legislated means. Legislators was people who make laws in the Parliament. So we used to spend our time thinking about legislation that would improve people's lives. Mm -hmm. That used to come up through party structures through the main memberships, Mm -hmm. whereas now it comes down. So basically somebody would come to you as a member and say, we need this to happen. Look at all those people out there that need this. Happened with same-sex superannuation. One of my constituents, it was affecting them. And instead of just changing one word from partner to wife, made all the difference, but it created so much trauma for people. Oh, I want to talk to you more about that too. So just sit there and be comfortable. I'm comfortable. Relax. You don't think you're in the house anymore. You can just relax. And we'll be back to talk to Francis more in just a tick. Francis Bedford is our very special guest because we've waited so long to talk to you. Uh, keep him waiting, keep him waiting. Keep waiting, keep waiting. We're just talking about the same-sex super. Mm-hmm. Um, that was quite an interesting, I suppose, spearhead into that whole same-sex I think it was. And it did actually start with one person in my electorate coming to see me about it. And that very slight alteration of one word from wife to partner or spouse but the founding fathers put in the word wife, we think most definitely, to make sure that that's what happened. And at that stage, of course, Good you point. could, in, with um, private superannuation, you could leave it to your budgie. Whereas with, with ours, it had to I've be. I've got two budgies. Yeah, I think well, that's you could wobble. leave it to your budgie if you wanted to. Okay. But it, ours, the state super was very, very strict. And so um, I had a lot of lobbying from a lot of people about even trying to do it because I did it as a private member's bill with the support of a whole lot of people, mm. both in Parliament and from the community. So, I was, you know, it was my pleasure and honour yes. to be able to take that forward. But that's a very good example of what you mean about starting from the Absolutely. bottom up rather than at the moment it tends to be from the top well, down. Well, they just say, no, you can't do it. Mm. And then you're expected to take no as the answer. But that's why suffragists, which is my other passion now, are so important because those women went from 1864 to trying to get the vote till 1927. I know. This is extraordinary. And and that's how we met, through the Muriel Matters story. Yeah. And the fact that you are the honorary... Secretary. Are you that honorary? Very honourable, <laughs> well, very honourable. But hang on, you would have been the honourable Francis Bedford before. Well, uh, no. I, See, in the upper house here, you're an honourable straight away, but I was the honourable member for Flory. Oh, well, isn't Ms. That, oh, not with your name no, attached. No, 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 no. You've got to be a minister for a certain period of time to oh, keep that. Oh, how unreasonable. Well, I know, and I'm never going to do that now. And you're never going to be honourable. N- well, I still think <laughs> I am, and I mean, I can think anything I like, can't I? <laughs> well, you can now. I think they should give hey. it to you for 25 years' service. Well, that's, uh, yes, where's the gold watch? I nothing. Don't nothing. I have nothing to show but the and scars. Actually, that's another interesting point. As I was saying before, after it's over... Mm. What is there for you, apart from... A lot um, of unpacking. (laughs) I found things you wouldn't believe in my boxes, Malcolm at Home. They're just, I mean, a bit bit like, you know, you've got stuff to unpack. It's always there. And some days I think, oh, I must open that. Now I get to the first piece of paper and that's the end of it. I'm off on a tangent somewhere. Yeah, I can understand that. But did you feel let down by the public? No, I didn't. I, I felt... I felt I hadn't done enough to get the message out, but it was just impossible, Malcolm, in such a short period of time. Yeah. Because at one point I thought, well, I could run for the seat of Flory, which had moved back the other way. But most of my work had been done in the Modbury area around the Modbury Hospital, mm-hmm. which had moved into the new seat of Newland. Right. And uh, last time, the time before, I had taken in Ingle Farm and Paraka, which are safe labour strongholds. Mm. But of course, those people get nothing because they're in a safe seat. Mm. Mm. Whereas now that Newland has become marginal instead of safe, 
it's now getting a lot of money, so it's, it's, well, it's yeah, interesting. See, in the federal election, it was interesting who lost their seats, who appeared to be, like you, honourable people desperately trying to make things happen and they were just whitewashed, probably with misinformation as well. Yeah, but then you've got the whole clump of teal candidates no, who are well, backed by... Their, but they are now really a party, aren't they? They are a party, yeah, yes. So, but I'm a tr I was a true independent. You were a because true... Because I, uh, yes. I borrowed the money for the elections and I didn't know anybody a, a favour, so I could say exactly... Very great valid way, point, actually. Was I too proud, How did Malcolm? you pay it back? <laughs> was I too proud? Yes, how did you pay it back? With, with my money, my yeah. own money. I borrowed well, the money and paid see, it off over four years. There's the other point well, that no I'm one making. Well, no one does that. They do now. And S that's why mm. I've always loved talking with you because you're, uh, you're really good old-fashioned... Long-standing. Don't say old. Long-standing Long-standing fashion. Yeah, I'm a conviction. Like this woman. Muriel, yes. Now, for those people who don't know about Muriel Matters, just give us... In two minutes, the Muriel Matters right. story. Well, Muriel was born in Bowdoin in South Australia in 1877. Grew up with a family who were uh, came to the colony in um, 1856, so about 20 years after it started. Her family were very involved in everything. They helped found the Methodist Church in Cambridge Terrace, Malvern, uh, Methodist Ladies College, very involved in civic matters. And they, her family, were very involved in the Women's Suffrage League here in South Australia, yep. which gave women, helped get, get women the vote. So South Australia is the first place in the world where women had the right I to know. vote and stand, not just vote. No, and be Because in... voting was in other places already, yes. but the voting and standing is really important. So she didn't actually do any work here about suffrage, but when she went to London to further her theatrical career, she landed right when the Pankhursts were in London doing their suffrage work. And as a good-looking young woman, could string a few words together because she was an actress and an elocutionist, could vote, she became the pin-up girl for the Women's Freedom League. And we use her story shamelessly to explain to people why democracy is important. Well, it is. Well, there's some lovely shots of her there. She's beautiful. You know, when you find out more, and fortunately I saw Teresa de Gennaro yes. playing her in, I suppose you could call sort of a cabaret type show. It was in the Cabaret Festival, a hundred years to the day that Muriel oh, came back it? to Adelaide. Yep. Well, apart from the fact that uh, Teresa was absolutely Marvelous. amazing in the role, yeah. um, it, it's such a fascinating story. Then I saw several documentaries about what happened in London. I love the bit about dropping out from... The balloon. The yeah. balloons, yes. Boats for women. Well, yes. that's the balloon... Uh, anniversary is coming up and the Muriel Matters Society. What, the, the actual balloon is having a birthday? Well, Mike Rand actually wanted to put me in a balloon at one point <laughs> and never bring me back. But the <laughs> Muriel Matters Society is having an exhibition at the National Council of Women and House with all our balloon memorabilia and there's quite a lot of it. So we've just finished a little exhibition of Lone Pine because Muriel's brother died at Lone Pine in Gallipoli. Right. So we... we believe funds part of the whole thing to do with activism and we now have the Muriel Matters Award in every high school in South Australia. Fantastic. Yeah, and that's really just due to... How did you find out about her? One line in a, in a brochure and I just had nothing to do one afternoon in Parliament while I was listening to a very long and tedious debate before it was my turn <laughs> and I realised I'd come across a story that nobody else had known and that was the story of her chaining herself to the gallery oh, in, um, in Parliament London. and we now have that uh, grill here in the foyer of Parliament House in um, Adelaide on North Terrace so you can go in and actually see the grill, which is being very hard to find here at the yeah, moment, always there on. she is, on, on yeah, attached to the grill. Now, we don't know that that's the actual part and of the And there's no grill. steak on the grill either. What a shame. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, we managed to get that loan from um, Westminster. We're the only place in the world who've ever managed to borrow anything from them. Uh, just, uh, I mean, the whole story is incredible, really. Yeah, well, I went over and attached myself to those poor oh, people. Did you? The only way they could get rid of me was to lend it to me. So. Well, how fantastic. But this book is available too. Through the Muriel Manor Society. Just Google Muriel and you're in. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that I often uh, rabbit on about on this program is our history. Because if mm -hmm. we don't know where we came from, we've no idea where we're going to go in the future. And doomed to make the same mistakes. Exactly. Over and yeah. over again, as many of our politicians are currently making. That's now, crazy. you know that I've just been away. I love it. 
Uh, when you're talking Great about story. ballooning, I actually did in Luxor go up did in you? the balloon I'd never do over, the, over the Valley of the Kings. Oh, it's the most wonderful place, isn't it? But this photo, which you brought in, because I said bring in any photos that are relevant. <laughs> it's got no relevance well, to this has, program. Has so. Well, I know, but it, the fact that it gave me the opportunity to talk about this, we've actually got a, a great shot of this. And which one are you? I'm fourth from the left in the front row. And that was one of the happiest what, days of my life. With, with the, the red and, and the orange on. Yeah, that's right. Right I was, in the middle. I was beside myself. And that, is that in the Karnak or Luxor temple? Uh, well, it's just, just after we got off the, off the river. And, okay, and there's our, two temples. Yeah, but it's the first, it's the first one as you come through the ramps. Oh, well, depends it's before, which, it's before no, death on the Nile. No, but it depends which way you come through the <laughs> well, ramps because it's all just been done up. Yeah. It's a three-mile roadway, if you like, with with the rams from King Ramses the Second. All I can't it, remember them. See, I Names remember because I've just been. But I was beside myself because our guide had worked with Om Seti, and she had only just died. Right. And so it was just like the pilgrimage. Here I was in this place. I desperately always wanted to visit with this person who had known a person and I got to go into Tutankhamun's tomb and into the Me Great too. Pyramid, Me too. do the horses at sunset and the camels yep. during the day, just like yep. we all do. Yep. Just, just fabulous. Uh, well, it's a wonderful place to visit with, with a history that really is still affecting us today. A lot of our politics come from, from what they actually did then. A lot of our belief system still comes from a basis of what they did. No spears, though, thank goodness. No. Well, there's a few people I <laughs> know with the spears. surname Spears. Yeah, that's Does true. that count? That's true. No, no, well, we, we try not to get into physical no, 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 fighting. No, 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 no. So Muriel Matters clearly was an inspiration for you. Well, once I realised that within the party structure there was not as much democracy as I thought was a good idea, I found this person. She fell into my lap and with her I'm shamelessly promoting democracy as an important part of our lives. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for doing what you've done with this because it's, it's just a great, it's a lovely book. Great. And it's yeah. written by Colette Snowden who has a connection here to the University of South Australia. So everyone's right. happy. Well, everyone's happy because we do need to know our past. And speaking of the past, our time is almost past, but we'll be back for one more segment with Francis. Our guest has been ex-politician, I guess we need to call her now, Frances Bedford. Is that right? Member of Parliament. Politician ex has such a terrible connotation. Okay, ex-member of Parliament. So in all seriousness, what advice would you give a young woman who has that passion to try and make a difference? Well, that's part of what this does. Every year that there's a, a Muriel Matters Award in school. So right. we hope that people are coming in, girls and boys, young men and young women, are coming out of schools with a fire in their belly to make things better or different. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is you have to get involved as much as you can in your community. And is it, would it be wise to start with, say, local government and then go to state government it depends. once you've got the experience? It depends. I mean, local government's changed really enormously because it used to be a, away from the big sand pits, whereas now it's seen as the initial sand pit. I, I don't think it needs to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I often tell people you don't have to be in Parliament to have a difference because if you have an issue and attach yourself to a Member of Parliament, they'll expect you to do some of the work, but you can get it done just as that constituent came to my office and said, I want the same six super bill to look after my partner. Um. I don't know, what are you going to do in the future when you grow up? <laughs> well, I mean, Muriel keeps me really busy. We had phone calls this week, just, just this week, two phone calls, one from someone in London who's writing a romantic novel on Muriel, like the Philippa Gregory cigarette series, mm -hmm. another lady who's called me from Victoria who's doing International Women's Day things, she wants to know about Muriel, and uh, we're going to have someone here doing looking for a connection between Adelaide and Queen Consort Camilla, and I gave them that link because oh, okay. here Muriel Matters lived in a house in front of Camilla's great-grandfather's wine business. Oh, goodness. No, I'm not, so going to sh no I'm not going to show anybody this. No. So you that's just the, have to get the book to find that's out. That's the link between Adelaide and Queen, Queen Consort. Could Camilla. have made the picture bigger for people. Well, I was lucky like to mine. get it in. Like you, I have producers who tell me what to do and he wasn't going to put it in. I said, that picture has How to How interesting, in. though. I've got a handwritten letter from her thanking me for it. Amazing. Congratulations on such great service to the community. Thank you. And to you. And to oh, you. Thank you for all but, you've done, Malcolm. But thank you. 
and good luck for the future, whatever you do. Thank you very much. I so, hope we cross paths again. Oh, we will. So until next time on our time, thank you, thank you. Keep yourself nice till next time. <laughs>